It's 117 yards a game in a 17-game season. A wide receiver, fact or fiction, will go for 2,000 yards in 2023. I'm going to say fiction. I'm not buying it just yet. I want to I want to buy into the whole Tyreek Hill hype because he says he's going to do it. He's motivated and then he talked about not knowing the playbook last year which is just unbelievable to me that you can be that talented in the NFL and just run around and be like throw me the ball I'll do the rest. And now he says he knows the playbook. So if Tua stays upright, then maybe Tyreek Hill can do it. I think he's probably the only guy but also, Tua staying upright, as we know, is probably the biggest if, I think, when it comes to the Dolphins and certainly in the quarterback position in the NFL. So I'm going to say fiction. I say that Megatron's record stands. I'll go fiction as well, just because if Cooper Cup couldn't do it the year that he was unstoppable, and he came close, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. What do he have? Yeah, 1,947 yards. So he came very close. But Cooper Cup had a lion's share of the targets. He was targeted mm-hmm. 191 times, had 145 uh, receptions on the season. Last year, Justin Jefferson was pretty close at 1,800, but only had 128 receptions. If you do the middle school math, 2,000 divided by 17 is 117 yards per game that you got to post each and every week. And that means you can't be missing games either. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is kind of unattainable. The fact that Calvin Johnson did this in, what, a 16-game schedule is absolutely crazy. I don't think anybody gets this. Maybe somebody comes close, but if Cooper Cup can't do it, it's going to be a tough road. Are we not giving the Tigers enough credit just because when you have this sustained success, when you make the college football playoff, you make the college football playoff, and then you take a small respite from that, are we sleeping on the Tigers a little bit just because they haven't been in the playoff super recently? You know, that's an interesting question because at one point I would say yes. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, I came back from ACC kickoff in Charlotte with two main ideas and speaking with some of the ACC media and some of the national media. People were doggone sure that Clemson's defense is going to be really good, even though I've got questions and I'm closer to the situation. And then people were very sure that Garrett Riley, uh, the new offensive coordinator for the Tigers, is going to fix the offense. Um, If you believe both of those things, then you shouldn't be sleeping on Clemson. Because if the defense is back to a level that Clemson's accustomed, I mean, this is a top five to ten unit in the country almost every year for a decade. Last year, they were probably a top 25, 30, 35 unit in the country. They just slipped a little bit. I mean, they've got as many as seven or eight guys that are going to get drafted in the next NFL draft potentially on this roster. They should be very good defensively. And then Garrett Riley has a great track record. Look at what he did at TCU. Uh, Look at the talent that Clemson has that's been untapped because of a lot of reasons. I would say quarterback play is in there. Wide receiver play is in there, certainly. Um, offensive line, they missed on some of their older guys, so they've had to kind of recruit with urgency and play guys too early uh, at times on the offensive front. And so I think fixing some of those things will certainly help. Your question is, are we sleeping on Clemson? And, and I would say, I, I kind of feel like Clemson is is being treated fairly this offseason because they have looked kind of, you know, milk toast compared to where they were. You know, this is a this is a team that made six straight playoffs. Uh, Nick Saban's Alabama is the only team that had a run like that. And the last two years, um, you know, they were they were one point away uh, from, from tying South Carolina, I guess two points away from beating South Carolina. If they beat South Carolina, it's very likely Clemson goes to the yeah. playoff last year. So it feels like they're, they've been very far away the last two years. But last year, they actually kind of worked their way into that conversation uh, late in the season. There is a high bar here. Um, If anything, I would say one of the things that's been puzzling is that a lot of folks have elevated Florida State above Clemson in the ACC pecking order and in the playoff pecking order. And uh, we were talking about this earlier this week. Florida State has been inside the top 10 zero weeks, zero, Mm -hmm. since 2017. They played five entire football seasons without being in the top 10 once. They're now eighth in the preseason because of what we think they might do based on a six-game win streak where they beat one ranked team and barely squeaked by two six and seven teams at the end of the year. So if there's any way that people are overlooking Clemson, 
I think it's this idea that Florida State has somehow earned their way into Clemson's category when we think Clemson's going to be better and we still have to see it in a big game for Mike Norvell and Florida State. Ooh, some fighting words for Florida State fans because you're right. All I've been hearing about is, oh, well, Florida State definitely can challenge Clemson for the ACC title. Are your wolf back going to cover? I have no idea. Like, I don't want to put faith in NC State. There's a chance we'll we'll lose outright. Who knows? I know, but you know how NC State treats my heart. They don't treat it very well. So I think I would lean towards UConn in this one. I made a good amount of money betting on UConn last season. They're Mm -hmm. coming out of the cellar. Like, they're still not going to be a contender or anything, but still the change in head coach, uh, Jim Moore Jr., has done an excellent job with UConn over the past year to where at least they're covering some numbers. It feels like a pretty long spread here. I think I would lean towards UConn, maybe keeping it close here. Devin Leary is gone for the Wolfpack, Mm -hmm. uh, and now we have Brennan Armstrong who's played like a 1,000 years at UVA uh, I just don't think the the upside is there for Brennan Armstrong remember last year when people were saying oh Devin Leary's gonna win the Heisman and NC State's gonna win the ACC yeah it never happened do not get your hopes about NC State sports they will only let you down so that's my two cents how much of this do you think is gamesmanship and trying to say okay well if we have a quarterback that may or may not be hurt mm-hmm. why wouldn't we try to use this to our advantage like, who do they play the first game in the season? The Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's as big of an advantage as it is in, like, say, college, because we do have some of this brewing in college football. We know, like, in was it the Utah game or Cam Rising? That's been, like, such a big secret yep. until yesterday. Do you think there is any gamesmanship, or do you think this doesn't really give the Browns any kind of issue because – you know, what are you going to do? Not prepare for a good quarterback? Because I don't yeah. know the backup for the 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 Bengals, but still, it's not going to be Joe Burrow. Trevor Simeon, isn't that the backup for the Bengals? I'm not quite sure. I know he's one of the guys because he played last week when the Bengals were in town taking on the Commanders, and I remember him getting some run in the second half. Ultimately, I don't know if it's gamesmanship, but I do think that what's going on here is that if he is out for six weeks – and then all of a sudden he's a full participant. This just goes to show if he's not even easing back into drills, that just goes to show that he doesn't need training camp and he's probably been better for a while now. They're just making sure he's not even 99%. He's 100%. And by the way, after this news came out, the Bengals were a one point favorite on the road week one in Cleveland. And that line immediately jumped to Bengals minus two and a half, which I would still take because it's below the key number of three. But now the Browns know Joey B's going to play.